Yeah, we're uh, here on the uh, Caribou Plateau and uh, an area where it's fairly dry and soil development is uh, not a real fast process, but here we are at a soil that looks different from anything that I've seen. Paul, do you want to give us a sense of what's going on here, what the processes are that created this unique sure. situation? Yeah, this this really is a special case. It's quite unlike anything else that you would see in the in the in the uh, central interior plateau. Uh, we're about 80 or 90 kilometers west of Quesnel, British Columbia, and we normally think of this as a region that that has a fairly dry continental climate. Uh, the, most of the soils that occur in this region are um, uh, luvisolic or brunisolic soils that that don't have strongly differentiated horizons and that's a reflection of two things the youthfulness of the deposits but more importantly the uh, the the cool dry climate which just limits how rapidly weathering processes can occur so what's distinctive about this soil that we're looking at right now is we're looking at a at a uh, soil profile formed on a very young but highly weatherable parent material so most of the parent materials for soils of this region are glacial deposits, which are perhaps 10,000 years old. But here we're looking at a relatively young, about 7,000 year old volcanic deposit. The, this was uh, produced by a cinder cone, uh, Nazco cone, which has erupted at various times over the last 300,000 or more years. But the most recent eruption produced this blanket or veneer of uh, these basaltic uh, cinders and some uh, mm -hmm. ash, and it weathers very quickly. I think one of the things you notice in sort of digging in this material is the physical uh, nature of the particles. It's very different from what we'd see, and uh, be interesting to find out more about that. Yeah, as you can see this from the surface of the profile, it's a very loose material, and we notice that the very strong red coloration, reddish brown coloration at the, at the surface, and that's quite. Uh, striking compared to all of the other soils in this area. So what's what's going on here is that these basaltic uh, materials uh, contain a high proportion of uh, non-crystalline or glassy components which are very unstable when they're exposed to uh, atmospheric conditions at the Earth's surface. So they, they break down very quickly. So these release iron uh, and other weather, iron oxides and other weathering products much more rapidly than any of the glacial parent materials in soil profiles in this same area. So parent material, uh, the nature of the parent material can alter the rate of uh, some of these processes that, that we see reflected in color and various e things. Exactly, and, and, I, and that's why I brought you here is because the uh, most of the soils formed on glacial deposits are really much less striking than this. Mm -hmm. They just don't have the right constituents to weather this rapidly. Yeah, that's good. The, uh, the uh, color is the first thing that, that you notice when you look at a lot of the dull uh, muted colors and then you see these, these bright reds and the fact that they, they originated in a very dark material too. That's, that's really contrasting. Juxtaposition of these yeah. colors is very, very different. Yeah. The other thing to note here too is, is uh, some of the uh, interactions between biological processes uh, and, and uh, the formation of this soil. You, we're in a very dry climate, as I mentioned, and so the trees that are growing on this site are uh, lacking for moisture during much of the growing season. And so unlike many of the other soils that we observe in uh, this part of British Columbia, we can see very easy to observe fine roots that go down as far as we have cleaned off. So even down at one or more, one meter or more from the surface, mm -hmm. we can see lots of, of fine roots. So part of what uh, accounts for that is the fact that it's such a loose material, so there's nothing to hinder the access of roots. But the other thing is that the the uh, uh, vegetation is limited by moisture in this climate, and it has uh, the roots are going to go as far as they have to to get adequate moisture. And because these uh, basaltic cinders are so porous, they contain lots of small pores, many of which may be fine enough that they can actually retain water. So we can see how the roots in this part of the profile have penetrated the particles of uh, basaltic cinders. And you can see them actually adhering 
to the root systems. So that means that fine roots and perhaps fungal hyphae have actually penetrated into the fine uh, pores within these very porous particles of basaltic cinders. And in fact, the fine roots go all the way down to as far as we've exposed in this profile. So if you're going to classify this soil, uh, what, would you, what would you call this? Uh, this would be a brunosolic soil. Uh, indicates a moderate degree of soil development, despite the very impressive colors here. Mm -hmm. At the surface, we can see a fairly thin forest floor with perhaps two to four centimeters of organic material and then a gradual transition into an A horizon where you can see incorporation of some organic material and then this very prominent bright colored B horizon that gradually fades out with depth and then finally down here we have a transition to the unweathered basaltic cinder parent material. You can see that the there hasn't been any great uh, translocation of weathering products with great depth. We see the most pronounced color development at the surface mm -hmm. and then it, it gradually fades out with depth. So this would, would be a brunosolic soil. Mm -hmm.